Hello, this is a key stage three chemistry video about the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, very important in terms of getting key terminology correct when talking about these kinds of substance. So firstly, we're going to use these key terms that are on the screen now. The word particles, when we use that, we actually mean either atoms or molecules, atoms or molecules, but we will be using the word particles. Properties includes the characteristics or features of a substance and behavior of particles. This is the way the particles move or are arranged in the different solid, liquid or gas. These are the key terms we're going to be using throughout the video. Let's start with solids. So in blue, we are going to write down the properties or some of the key properties of solids. The first one is that solids will keep a fixed shape. As long as there's no force on them, they will keep their fixed shape. The second property is that they cannot be compressed. This means they cannot be squashed or squeezed into a smaller volume. And thirdly, they are dense, which means they have quite a high mass for the volume that they have. So these are three properties, three important properties of solids. Let's take a look at the arrangement of particles. I'm sure you've seen a diagram like this before, but these are the particles in the solid and this is the arrangement. So the first thing to remember is that the particles are very close together. The particles are very close together and they are in neat rows and columns. Sometimes we call this a lattice structure. It just means the particles are close together in, and in rows and columns. In terms of the behavior of the particles, that's how they move, the particles stay in their positions. They don't move freely. However, that doesn't mean they don't move at all because they do vibrate gently in their positions, but they do stay in their positions. Now, the important thing to be able to do here, and this is really important, is to be able to link the property to the arrangement or the behavior of the particles. So, for example, solids have a fixed shape because the particles stay in their positions. They don't move freely. Another example is that solids cannot be compressed because the particles are very close together, so they cannot be pushed any closer together. Let's make a sentence to help explain a property. So if we think of solids, we can say that solids have a fixed shape. They have a fixed shape because the particles stay in their positions. You can see there that we're linking the property of the solid to the way the particles behave. Sometimes it's the way the particles are arranged, but we link the property to either the arrangement or the behavior of the particles. And it's very important we do it in that way. Take a look to see how we've used the word because to link the property to the behavior of the particles. So solids have a fixed shape because the particles stay in their positions. You mustn't mix up the properties with the behavior of the particles. So let's take a look at a question that you might see somewhere. So it says, why do solids have a fixed shape? And the person here has written because the particles have a fixed shape and they are dense. This wouldn't score because you are giving the particles the properties of the solid. We say the solid has a fixed shape and we don't usually describe the particles as having a fixed shape. So this would not score. What's a better way to put it? Well, we can say that... Solids have a fixed shape because the particles stay in their positions and the particles do not move freely. In this way, you are relating the property of the solid, the fixed shape, to the way the particles behave. So this would score a mark. We can do a similar thing with liquids. So let's take a look at liquids. Here is a liquid. And if we're looking at the properties of liquids, there are a couple of key ones we should know. Firstly, liquids take the shape of the bottom of their container. That's one of the properties. They also cannot be compressed, just like solids cannot be compressed. But what is different is that liquids can flow. Liquids can flow. So these are the properties for liquids. Let's take a look at the arrangement of the particles. I'm sure you've seen something like this before. So this is the arrangement of the particles. 
And the first thing is that the particles are close together, but the particles are arranged randomly and not in rows and columns. That's the arrangement of the particles. What about the behavior of the particles? How they move? Well, the particles can move freely and in all directions. So let's explain a property. Liquids cannot be compressed because the particles are close together. That's one example. Another one would be that liquids can flow, and that is because the particles can move freely in all directions. So again, see how we're linking the property to either the arrangement or the behavior of the particles. So let's see how we can explain one of these in writing. So we can talk about the idea of our liquids. So liquids take the shape of the bottom of their container. And again, important to use the word because. And that's because the particles can move freely in all directions. So again, an important use of the word because to explain a property and link to the behavior of the particles as we've done there. Let's take a look to see how sometimes it can be a little bit confusing to explain this. Why can liquids flow? Someone has written because liquids can move freely in all directions. Again, they're talking about the liquids. They're re really kind of rephrasing the question. They haven't really talked about particles there, so this would not score a mark. However, what would be a better way to say it? Why can liquids flow? Well, again, using the word because in our answer, it's because the particles can move freely in all directions and they aren't in fixed positions. This is a better answer because we're relating the behavior of the particles to the property of the liquid. So that would be a good answer. Let's do gases. The properties of gases include that they have no definite shape. They can fill a space or a container, not just sit at the bottom of it. They also can be compressed, so they can be compressed, and finally they can flow. Just like liquids, they can flow. I'm sure you've seen, again, a diagram like this, but this is the arrangement of the particles. And we can say that the arrangement, the first thing is the particles are very far apart with lots of empty space between them. And then in terms of the behavior of the particles, they move freely in all directions. The particles can move freely and in all directions. So again, gases have no definite shape. Why is that? Again, it's because, and we must use the word because, I don't think I used it there, but we should use the word because, the particles can move freely and in all directions. That's how you would construct a sentence to explain the properties in terms of the behavior of particles. Here's a question. Why can gases be compressed? It says here because the particles can be squashed and gases have lots of space in between them. So again, they're talking about the properties of the gas and not how the particles behave or how the particles are arranged. So we could do a slightly better answer than this. So if we um, did that again, pause here if you can think of or write a better answer. But if not, we can say this as it's because the particles are far apart and have empty space between them and the particles can be squashed together. Important to use the word together there. So you're saying the particles are squashed together and not the particles themselves are being squashed. So that's a better answer and that would get you a mark or score the points for a question like that. So we have some very important skills in terms of being able to explain properties based on behavior and arrangement of particles. However, to help you revise and really make sure you remember this, here is a summary of everything. So in blue there, we've got the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. And in black, with because written in bold, because it's so important, the reason for that property. So this would be a very useful sheet to work with a friend. You can test yourself whether you know the properties of each. And really importantly, if you can explain the property based on behavior and arrangement of particles and get the terminology correct.
So that's it for the video today. I would suggest you get a screenshot of that and save it on your computer or device if you can, and then use that with a friend to do some practice on getting terminology correct for this sort of thing. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.